In today's video, we'll be using our understanding of boundary conditions to find the induced surface charge density. We're given a block with a material <clears throat> with a permittivity of 2 epsilon naught. It is found to be tilted at 53 degrees from the y-axis. We're also given E2 and E1 as our fields. So if we want to start, we can draw a block at 0 degrees, and we want to find the normal component of the D field. So if I were to draw a vector straight off the block at a 90 degree angle, we can call this N hat. Now, if we want to tilt this block by some degrees, I can redraw it like this. And my normal component, n hat, would be tilted the same degrees. So how can I prove this? Well, if I take the bottom part of the block and I draw a y, z plane, I can see that this angle here is 53 degrees. And if I were to draw that same y, z plane up here, I can see that this inside the block is 53 degrees and that this angle here will be 27 degrees. And because this is a right angle as well, here, we can say, state that this will be 53 degrees. All right, so we know that the block is tilting at 53 degrees. So the n normal, or the n hat, must be 53 degrees from that z-axis. So if I redraw our yz plane here, and I draw n hat, like this, this angle is 53 degrees. We're given cosine 53 is equal to 3 over 5, and sine 53 is equal to 4 over 5. If I was to break down our n, component, or n hat into components, I could say, that this is the z component here, and that, or, and this is the y component here. So, knowing that this is 53 degrees, we can use trig. So our y, our y hat, is the same thing as saying y hat sine. 53 degrees. So the value of our y here is sine 53, whatever the value is here. So, and that's given to us. So sine 53 is equal to 4 over 5. And then our z would be our adjacent. So z hat is cosine 53 degrees, which is 3 over 5. So we're just breaking down the n hat component into its x or its uh, z and y components. And that's why we use y hat sine 53 and z hat cosine 53. So now, now that we know what our n hat looks like with respect to the block, we can start this problem. First, we want to write out n hat. So we can write n hat is equal to negative y hat sine 53 degrees plus z hat cosine 53 degrees. And we're using sine and cosine here to denote our y and z value. And what we can look for is what's given to us. So cosine 53 is the value 3 over 5, and sine 53 is 4 over 5. So if we were to convert that from our cosine and sine, we'd get negative 4 y hat plus 3z hat over 5. They're both over 5, so this would be our n hat vector. All right. So 
we want to find the electric field with respect to this normal vector that we got. So what we can do is we can say E1n, the electric field with respect to the normal vector, would be E1 vector dot n hat vector, which would give us from our E1 equation, 3, 2, and negative 1. So if I was to write this above, it would be x, y, and z. So this is how we would break down our n vector. So we have this dotted with our n vector, which is 0, because we do not have an x, but we do have a y and a z. So we'll take 4 over 5 for y and 3 over 5 for z. So that gives us the values negative 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. All right, so our E1 n is equal to 1.6 minus 0 0.6, which gives us a value of negative 2.2. .2. And all we're doing here is we're just multiplying this across. So 3 times 0 is 0. 0 point, or negative 0 0.8 times 2 is 1.6, and then we subtract negative 0 0.6. All right, and actually this should be negative, my mistake. And then we want to do our D1n. D1 will tell us the electric displacement vector, which will help us understand where the free charges are regarding this block. So we would say D1n is equal to epsilon not E1n. So we get negative 2.2 .2 epsilon naught. All right. So I'm going to just move this guy to the side. D1n. When we use the displacement vector, to find the surface charge density, okay? So let me just clear a little bit of room and we're gonna solve for E2n now. E2n will be the electric field inside the block. So if I was to write E2 and E1, those were the different mediums that we're looking at, okay? So if I write E, 2n is equal to e2 vector, so the electric field vector, times our n hat vector. We'd get 3, 10, and 5 for the e field, so 3, 10, 5. And that gets dotted with the n hat vector, which is 0, negative 0 0.8, and 0 0.6. By doing the dot product here, our E2n, our electric field 2 with respect to n, would create a scalar, negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. And then we can plug that into our D2n, our electric displacement, which would be 2 epsilon naught times E2n, which would give us negative 10 epsilon naught. And the reason why we're, we're using 2 epsilon is because the E field, or E2, inside the block has the permittivity of 2 epsilon naught. All right? So now we have our, we have our D1n and D2n. I'm just going to rewrite them so it's a little bit easier to see. We have D1n is equal to negative 2.2 .2 epsilon naught, and then D2n, which is negative 10 epsilon naught. And how to find surface charge density? We do surface charge sigma is equal to D1n minus D2n. And if we plug in our numbers, we get negative 2.2 .2 epsilon naught 
minus 10 epsilon naught. And because this is a minus and a minus, we get plus. So what we end up getting is we get 7.8 epsilon naught. And if we were to plug in the value that we get here for epsilon naught of 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, our surface charge density is equal to 69 PC M squared. So this would be pico coulombs per meter squared. And that's going to be our surface charge density for our block.